Hey y'all and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. In this video I'd like to go over the hunts in Avernus. Currently with Milestone 3 unlocked on PC we have all three tiers of the hunts unlocked and we can go ahead and murder the Night Spine gaining all sorts of different types of gear which some of them are actually really good and are much better than the pieces of gears that we can actually obtain anywhere else in the game. So in this video I'm going to go over all the different uh, tiers of the hunts, how to obtain your lore and also what types of gear you can hope to obtain and ultimately give me opinions on this whole system and whether I think it's good or bad or what could be better and ultimately hopefully this can help you decide whether these hunts are actually worth it for you or not. So let's start things off with the basic mechanics of the hunts. Well, essentially you have six different types of tier one hunt mobs where basically you have to kill a certain type of mob whether it be your Hezrau, and then after you kill them, there's a certain chance that, let's say, the Searing Hezrau, which are the hunt mob, which will drop you the trophy, that they will spawn. And once they spawn in their specific locations, you can go ahead and kill them. And then there is a small chance that you will obtain the hunt trophy from that mob. Then this hunt trophy is needed and required. If you go to this NPC over here, you can see when you go to trade, you need one one of those six types of hunt trophies combined with a gore covered chain to obtain your tier 1 hunt lore. And then once you have obtained your tier 1 hunt lore, you go to the given location and you go ahead and you kill the boss that summons with that lure. So then you have a chance to obtain a trophy from this tier 1 boss. And this tier 1 trophy is needed to combine with another tier 1 trophy to obtain the next hunt lore for tier 2. We go ahead and look at this NPC right here. You can see the different types of trophies that you need to obtain the actual lures. And you can see it's two different types of trophies for each lure and they're all unique to each other and therefore you will have to kill all six of the tier one hunt bosses and obtain the trophies from them to go ahead and be able to craft up all the lures that you need for tier two and that only giving you one so it's luck behind luck behind luck orangey upon orangey upon orangey and then upon creating your tier 2 hunt lore you go to that given location you kill the boss that it summons at this point you probably need a party of five to be able to kill this boss and then this boss the same has that chance to drop the trophy and dropping the trophy you then need all three types of those trophies to combine them, if we look at this final hunt master here, you can see you need each type of trophy from each type of those tier 2 bosses to combine them, ultimately gaining you the final hunt lore for the Night Spine. Well, is this series of orangey behind orangey worth it? Well, in my opinion, no. Not for me, at least. Uh, at least I'm going to take things slow. Every now and again, when it, the want arises, I'll just go and farm some mobs and hopefully obtain some more of those uh, trophies. And ultimately, I'm not going to go there spending hours upon hours trying to obtain those trophies because it is insanely hard to do so. If you're solo, it can take you hours to obtain a few lures to be able to progress up the whole system and ultimately you're trying to get that tier 3 one because the gear on that tier 3 one. Let's go over it. In the tier 1 hunts, when you go and use the tendrils of shadow lure, you will summon up this demon and basically it will have a chance to drop the wisps of the shadow demon these being the boots that you'll be able to slot on your feet now with these you basically have a chance when you receive a critical strike to increase your maximum hit points by 20 percent and your defense by three percent now these boots are specifically good in pvp because people will stack crit and they'll undoubtedly crit on you unless you have an insane amount of critical avoidance and on top of this you can get this to trigger whenever you are critically healed now it is only a 10 percent chance that this will happen so you'll have to be healed quite a lot for it to proc and even when it does proc you might not even need the extra hp then but for attack, there's no other good boots around except getting the highest item level one, the 1250. But this is not short off of that. 
So these boots, I would say, are currently the best for tanking. Then also in tier 1, when you use the Corrupted Feather Lore, you can obtain the Greaves of the Fallen Angel. Now these basically will increase your power by 5000 when you're 25 feet or closer to your target. Now these are good for like Tower of the Mad Mage or Zariel where generally you are grouped up behind the boss and you'll have this power all the time. However, the rusted iron leggings will still beat these giving you that 5% extra damage. But if you're learning your trial, ideally you don't run with those rusted iron leggings because they have that minus 25% incoming healing. And yeah, if you're not good at running the mechanics, you might take excessive amount of damage. So you can't expect your healer to heal you up all the time if you're running with minus 25% incoming healing. So that's everything I would pretty much say is worth it in tier one. There are another one or two pieces there that are arguably useful, but I would say just gaining power is better than that. Now, unfortunately, if you go ahead and kill all of the tier 2 hunt bosses, there is no gear that I would say there is useful for anybody specifically other than high item level for hit points. But you can always go go and use the Infernal Citadel gear, the Lion Guard gear, and that will be higher item level than any of these hunt gear pieces. The bonuses on them are just pretty abysmal in my opinion. So let's move on to tier 3. Now this is where things get interesting. I believe there is recorded so far 6 different types of gear which you can obtain from this tier 3 hunt. On top of that you can also go ahead and obtain shirts and pants. Now with our actual Pacific gear we have some really decent and interesting ones. For example for DPS a really good set is the Whisperer's Hood of Quiet. Basically, whenever you hit your target for 10% of your maximum HP, you gain 1,500 power and also an increase in speed. I'm assuming this is movement speed. For 10 seconds, stacking up to five times. This is Butcher's Precision. It's very similar to Butcher's Might. Now, you won't have to go ahead and sacrifice your armor slot because this slot's in your head piece. So this will ultimately give you 7,500 power. However, there is one that beats it when you're against bosses, the Helm of the Skyblazer. When you're against one enemy, your power is increased by 10,000. Now this is definitely good within Tower of the Mad Mage, since you only have to fight Halaster. It's questionably good in Zariel, because in the DPS checks, phase two and phase four, that's when you have two targets. So you may not gain this bonus, and this is the crucial point to have that damage. So you maybe, yeah, want to go back to the headpiece, the Whisperer's Hood of the Quiet, giving you 7,500 power. Then we go on to a piece that can replace your Ebonized or your Scavengers. And this is the Bone Devil's Ribcage. This, again, is very beneficial for DPS. You could also run it on a healer. I believe a Cleric can do pretty good with using this with their healing word because it will proc it all the time. Basically, it has Butcher's Might. It doesn't have the percentage value increase in power, but it has a specific number, 2,500 power for 15 seconds, stacking up to five times, meaning you can gain a total of 12,500 power just from all of these stacks, and you can pretty much have it up all the time during your DPS checks within Tower of the Man Mage and also Zarya when there is no mechanics in Phase 2 and phase four. So this here again is best in slot for your DPS. And again, if we look at the item level of all of these, they are 1,250, which is the equivalent of the Lion Guard gear. Anyway, on top of this, we also have a really good armor piece for, let's say, like the Paladin Healer. This being the breastplate of the Crusader. If I could get my hands on this, I would, and I hope to do eventually. Basically, whenever you have shield or temporary HP, your power is increased by 8000. This is specifically good for a paladin shielder because you are there to give those shields. Whenever you cast your main heals, you'll be shielding as well. And thus, generally in like a trial, we use sheltering light, which basically gives everybody a shield. So we'll gain this benefit of 8000 power. We also tend to find ourselves, at least I do, spamming sheltering light multiple times and thus for those sheltering lights after the first we would generally have this extra power and have a buff to our heals. Currently the chess piece that I'm using is just the lion guard piece which gives me next to no benefit to my heals. 
And finally, we have a really good feet slot. The Greaves of the Light Guard. This is again very good for DPS who like to play nice for their healers and also play more cautiously and is also very good for healers. Basically, it has the bonus Champion's Might where when your health is above 85%, your power is increased by 7,500. This is very good for DPS, as generally, yes, your health will be above this, especially in DPS checks, where there isn't much damage going around. And also for healers, it's very good, because generally you'll also have your own health above this amount, and when you're just healing the tanks, you'll generally also have full HP and thus gain this extra power. Before this, I was using the Infernal Forged boot, which would just give me 4,800 power after all those stacks have dacked up. So now we move on to the shirts and pants, which you can obtain from the tier three boss. Now there is one shirt in particular, which is arguably best for DPS and healers, especially healers. Now, previously, people were always using the Ebonized shirt, giving you that 3% extra damage when your stamina is above 75%. Arguably, now we can use the upper packed brands of the Inferno, giving us that bonus of Charged Fury. When our stamina is above 75%, we gain 5,000 power. Now, this is very good for healers. More power, more heals. And so this is beneficial, better than having 3% damage on a healer because you don't need damage. And for DPS, you could arguably use this over the 3% because the increase in power is a whole lot more because the item level is higher. And on top of that, it gives you that 5,000 power, giving you a total of 11,240 power compared to what the Ebonize gives you on top of 3%. Now, arguably, the more power you have, the more bonus you'll get from the 3% damage because the more power you have, the less effect it gives for damage. Now on top of this, we have two other shirts, none of them particularly any good. You have one which will increase your power when the enemy's health is above 75%, pretty useless for boss fights, decent for when you want to one-shot mobs, and then our pants. Unfortunately, there's no pants there that are specifically good. However, there's one pants in particular which will be good for helping to cap that defense. On top of this, the bonus is just when you critically strike, you have a chance to gain 25 action points. Now, this is decent, especially in a trial, because the more action point, the better. And you just want to make sure you have that action point every minute for the artifact call. And basically, it's the pants of the Hell's Interrogator. Basically, it'll give you on that off bonus that 5,300 defense, greatly helping you to cap that defense which is very important for trials and endgame so ultimately there are definitely a few pieces of hunt gear which i would like to obtain for my paladin healer as for dps yeah there are a few pieces there that i would like for my dps however i'm not a fan of running dps in endgame it just for me it's really i don't know toxic and competitive and it just costs a lot it's a lot of grinding you got to make sure your build is top notch to be able to run the content at a competitive state to make sure you have that really good output of damage and ultimately i just prefer being a support role like a healer or a tank so for my paladin healer the specific items that i do wish to obtain would be the helm of the skies blazer for my head slot the breastplate of the crusader for my armor slot for my arm slot, I'm just sticking with my Lion Guard and the Grease of the Light Guard for my feet slot. And then for my shirt, I'd love to get my hands on the upper packed brands of the Inferno. And for my pants, I would just like to get that higher item level one for that increase in power and also the increase in HP, especially for my tank build. Anyway, that's pretty much everything for hunts and what you really need to know. My opinion of the hunts is that yes, they are an insane amount of grind, but them having best in slot gear is currently also not really something I'm in favor of. I would prefer things like the trial of Zariel to also have this equivalent gear, but it is what it is and it's a nice bonus for you casual players because this is something you can go for you you don't need to be a end game player you don't need to spend hours learning mechanics you're just gonna spend your time hours and hours of that time grinding and just killing mobs in Avernus, obtaining those trophies crafting those lures killing those hunt bosses and ultimately having a chance to obtain the gear for now for me to grind it out fully 
it's just too much time and I don't really have that spare time on my hands to do that. So I will wait a while. They're most likely going to reduce the uh, time it takes to get a tier 3 lure. Eventually at least they will. But I'm just going to wait for now. We'll see what happens in mod 20 which is only in another 2 or 3 months. And that's it. Hopefully I've presented this well. If I did, consider leaving a video a like. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.